You see, this is why I like this job and this is why I like making videos. Where is Herb's Point? I thought I knew. Turns out there are three of them. Which one is the right one? Let's look at them all and talk a little bit about Herr Herb. Making videos like this gives me the opportunity to read around the subject a little bit more and understand things better. This is not something I'd teach my students in a normal class, this is an extra thing. Um, it was on my to-do list though, Herb's point, so somebody's asked me about it, somebody has a similar confusion. Now and this is the problem with eponymous naming, uh, naming something after somebody and also as time goes by history models things. But uh, Wilhelm Erb was a German uh, neurologist. He was born in 1840, lived until 1921. He was the chair of gen general medicine. Um, he's the guy that was first reporting on tendon tapping. Um, you don't tap there, he tap there. Tendon tapping, uh, deep tendon reflexes. He, he was working on uh, sensory neurons and motor neurons and things like that. Now, when somebody says Herb to me or Herb's palsy, I remember that. I remember the brachial plexus injury. And that's part of it. So, Herb, in a paper in 1883, described a point a few centimeters superior to the clavicle. Um, a little posterior to the sternocleidomastoid muscle um, at the level of the carotid tubercle, which is what, six cervical vertebra. A point which if you stimulated with electro stimulation needles, you could cause contraction of biceps brachii, brachialis and deltoid. Herb's point, right? If you were to ask an ENT surgeon where Herb's point was, they would probably take you here. So, there's the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Oh, we're a little bit wiggly here, aren't we? Um, on the posterior border of sternocleidomastoid, about halfway along maybe, the nerves of the cer cervical plexus appear uh, superficially, and we have the greater auricular nerve, the lesser occipital nerve, the supraclavicular nerves, the transverse cervical nerves. Look, all these nerves, these are branches of the cervical plexus, so these are spinal nerves. Uh, coming out of the cervical spinal cord and forming a plexus. These nerves appear at this point. I actually tested this theory earlier on an ENT surgeon. He, he didn't say that at all, but <laughs> you try it out. You see if you get a different result. Also at this point, um, there's, oh, there's sternocleidomastoid again. So again, if this was, this is Herb's point, you'll also find, um, this nerve here, this is the accessory nerve. The spinal accessory nerve, cranial nerve 11, also appears there. That's coming from the brainstem and it's gonna run out to trapezius after innervating sternocleidomastoid. So this is Herb's point. It's also the nerve point or punctum nervosum. Have the words Herb's point and nerve point been confused over the last 140 years, maybe, because Herb's description was further down here. Down here I can see the brachial plexus. And those two points aren't very far away from each other, but anatomically they're different points. And as I said before, if somebody says Herb, Herb's point, I think Herb's palsy. And if we look at the brachial plexus, there's an Herb's point. Here's the brachial plexus. So the brachial plexus is a bunch of spinal nerves coming together to form the major nerves of the upper limb. And where the spinal nerve roots of C5 and C6 come together here to form the upper trunk or the superior trunk of the brachial plexus, that's Herb's point. Um, because Herb's palsy describes damage to the upper trunk of the brachial plexus and these are going to contribute to the musculocutaneous nerve, uh, the axillary nerve and a bit of the radial nerve, leading to um, weakness of the elbow flexors and biceps brachii not just flexes the elbow but is also a powerful supinator of the elbow 
And um, the axillary nerve innervates the deltoid muscle, uh, which means that in Herb's palsy, the presentation is the arm is hanging by the side because you can't use your deltoid muscle to abduct. Um, the arm is extended because uh, your elbow flexors are paralyzed and the forearm is pronated like a, you know, like a waiter's asking for a tip, but actually it's just pronation of the forearm because the pronation muscles are now winning because the big supinator is um, not working against them. So this is the presentation of, of Herb's palsy, right? That is an upper brachial plexus injury. That is Herb's point. Or is it? <laughs> if you ask a medical student where Herb's point is, and I just tested this on a medical student, they will probably tell you that Herb's point is there. Well, kind of hopefully. This is the third intercostal space adjacent to the sternum. This is the, uh, one of the auscultation points where you're listening to the sounds of the heart. This is where you hear, to the, hear the S2 sound. So the second sound of the heart, the, the dub of the lub dub. So the closing of the um, semilunar valves, right? So third intercostal space adjacent to the sternum. You put your stethoscope there, you list that. That is Herb's point. And there does seem to be some evidence in the history that Herb did describe this in, uh, in one of his uh, lectures. Which one is the real Herb's point? They're all correct. They are all Herb's point. I did have a good rummage around and I couldn't find any others, but there are three Herb's points. Now this is how language develops and this is how descriptive anatomy develops. Um, clinical anatomists are using these anatomical locations as Herb's point. You need to be able to recognize that. So if somebody describes to you Herb's point, Herb's point, Herb's point, you know what they're talking about. Um, yeah, and this is why we're trying to get away from eponymous naming, naming something after somebody and instead giving it a more specific anatomical name. Not that that always works either because there are, there are um, more than one foramen ovale as well. <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, if you can think of any fun examples where there are multiple things named after the same person, and not just like lots of things named after Professor Eustachio, but like exactly the same thing, like Herb's Point, let me know, because I would like to read more about that. No wonder I was confused when students asked me about Herb's Point. I understand more now. Right, see you next week. <laughs>